All right, a little tale of two motorcycles. Uh, so right around New Year's of uh, 2020, I started getting the itch to ride a motorcycle again, something I hadn't done in a long time. And um, I was looking for something like this. This is a 1977 Honda CB750, and it is very, very much like a bike I had back when I was a kid. I'll put a picture of my old bike up so you can see how how close it is. My bike, I believe, was a uh, 76. <clears throat> so I, you know, I went out looking for uh, something like this. Uh, and this was like, you know, January, February of uh, 2020. And um, uh, they weren't popping up in the local market. And a buddy of mine who's a big motorcyclist, you know, saw this uh, advertised and said, oh, man, this, you need to take a look at this. This is a good bike. This is a 1993 Suzuki GSX 1100G. The G uh, indicates that it is a drive shaft model. No chain back there. So, anyway, went back and forth talking to him about it, and um, <clears throat> I kind of had in my mind that you know, basically, this is a very, very similar bike to this one. Uh, you know, standard riding posture. I don't want to crotch rocket or anything. Um, and uh, you know, maybe a little bit heavier, but uh, overall, just an update on uh, on the old uh, Honda. You know. Drive shaft, uh, you know, mag wheels instead of spokes, you know, alloys instead of uh, chrome and steel, and so on and so forth. It is still carbureted, four carburetors in both uh, both bikes, so it's not up to the, like the uh, the fuel injection era, but it is still still a lot of advancements. Uh, you know, twin uh, disc front brakes, uh, single disc rear. The Honda has a single disc front and a drum rear brake. Uh, so yeah, anyway, so that was my idea going in and getting this bike, was that it's just an update on, you know, Old Faithful that I had back when I was a kid. And uh, my buddy uh, rode up with me, it was about two hours away, uh, we went out and, uh, with his trailer, because, uh, you know, like I said, he's a big motorcyclist, so he had a trailer all set up for a motorcycle. We went out and, uh, and uh, looked this over, and I let him test ride it, because, you know, I hadn't been on a bike in years, uh, and, um, you know, he give it a thumbs up and I bought it and brought it home and that was about the time COVID hit so uh, the DMVs were closed so it sat around for months while I was waiting to get you know get it registered and everything uh, finally got it registered <clears throat> and started getting out and riding it and man this thing felt heavy to me really really heavy like scary heavy like you know maybe more than I wanted and uh, so this bike uh, I think dry weight is like 600 pounds which, uh, you know, you guys who have, you know, the 1,000-pound bikes, yeah, screw you, you're going to laugh at me. Uh, this bike is uh, 500 pounds. It didn't seem like that much difference, right? Five, 600 pounds. But, you know, I guess it all depends on center of gravity and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, this bike just felt heavy to me. And I, I, I found myself, you know, still wanting to go back and try one of these guys. Uh, meantime, you know, I put about 500 miles on this uh, riding locally. Um, trailed it down. I did finally uh, uh, get a, you know, get my trailer set up for uh, hauling a bike, mainly because I did have a breakdown with this bike. Uh, I, I had a situation where the uh, starter solenoid got stuck in the uh, closed position and just wouldn't unstick and uh, it caused a lot of issues and broke me down on the side of the road and I'm sitting there broke down on the side of the road, uh, wanting to push the bike across four lanes of traffic um, to a parking lot and just not feeling confident that I could because uh, the bike just seemed so tippy to me that if I, I felt like when I tried to wheel it that I felt like it was going to fall away from me. Like, you know, you'd, you'd stand on this side and try to wheel it and um, I felt like, you know, it just... Um, I was going to drop it. So, ended up just uh, parking it on the side of the road and uh, getting a tow truck. Uh, and that was a really scary experience the way the tow truck worked out. Uh, really surprised me the way they did it. Um, 
And so I determined I was going to have a self-recovery option. <laughs> so I got my trailer all hooked up and everything so I can now haul a bike and it, it works well. But um, that was one of those moments when I was like, yeah, this bike might just be a little too heavy for me. So anyway, <clears throat> I have been enjoying riding it around. It is a great bike. I mean, it, it is it's super fast um, and it's very reliable after I fix that one starter relay problem. Uh, what else happened? Oh yeah, the um, the speedometer cable broke, and I had to get a new one of those. Uh, other than that, it's just been you know turnkey ride. You know, great. Um, anyway, I was talking to a uh, uh, a guy that I'd recently met, uh, and uh, through my motorcycle buddy, and told him, yeah, yeah, you know, I really like this bike. It's a little heavy. Kind of wish I'd gotten to try my old bike. And he said, really? You're really interested in an old Honda? Anyway, long story short, he knew where one of these was sitting in a garage. Um, it was about three hours away. You know, he hooked me up uh, with phone numbers and everything. Gave the guy a call. Um, so this bike hasn't run in 12 years. Uh, about 12 years ago, it had uh, an electrical issue, and he parked it and was going to, you know, work on it, and just never did, and so it's just been sitting there. He did say it's got uh, ethanol-free gas uh, in the tank, um, and uh, he put stable in it. I, I'm not sure whether that's good or bad, uh, given different reviews I've heard. But, okay, so uh, it does, you know, you can actually turn the motor. This does have a, a kickstart, so it turns, gears shift, um, You'll notice there's no headlight there. That's because it came with a fairing. I'm going to ditch the fairing. So I've ordered a headlight, and I'm going to have to um, buy a bracket for it and everything. i got to do some rewiring because uh, somebody had spliced in this um, adapter for the fairing. Uh, and so I'll have to get uh, side lights and, and everything and, and redo the wiring. and all that, all that will sit inside of the headlight. So <clears throat> I'll do all that. Um, and um, you know, go through the motions of uh, you know, probably draining the carbs and draining the tank and uh, trying to dribble some gas in it and all that kind of stuff. Been holding off on it because uh, my daughter's car was sitting here in the lift, <laughs> and uh, this is the first chance I've had to just sort of side by side sit on them and you know compare them. And uh, yeah, that hundred pounds of difference is huge. Just wheeling this thing around, I can wheel it. It feels like a bicycle compared to um, the Suzuki. Uh, I mean, it's a heavy. I mean, you know, for me, 500 pounds is pretty heavy. And it just turns out that uh, I guess it has to do with center of gravity and, and whatnot. But that's 600 pounds on that bike feels much, much heavier to me. So uh, <clears throat> it's going to be interesting if I can get this bike to be. I will definitely get it running and um, ride it around and uh, just sort of compare, go back and forth between the two and uh, see which one. Uh, I really don't have room to keep both of them. So um, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting. But this one, uh, this one really does make my heart go pitter patter. It's, uh, it's a beautiful bike. They're both beautiful bikes. You know, this is a first world problem trying to figure out which one of these to keep. but. Uh, Right now, that one runs. I can ride it any day. We've had some uh, unseasonably warm weather later, lately, so I've been out and about on it. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, when, I, uh, when I'm able to get around to working on this one, I still have some issues with my daughter's car to get fixed, so I promised myself I'm not going to get sidelined, <laughs> sidetracked. So, uh, yeah. Finish my daughter's car, and then probably mess with this guy. Uh, just thought I'd show the first, uh, this is the first time I've really had to, you know, been able to put them side by side, you know, and just sort of admire them. They're beautiful. I love them. Talk to you later.
All right, we're going to see what 12-year-old fuel looks like. Hmm. Okay, one thing is leaking all out of the pep top. That smells like gas. <laughs> Not as bad as I might have thought. Could be worse. Uh, what worries me, however, is when I had this turned on, uh, it was leaking from the valve itself, not just coming out of the where it's supposed to come out of. Now you can see some little uh, particles down in there, uh, rust, I'm assuming. Okay. Let's see what else is coming out of the tank. Mmm, look at that. Bleh. That's some nastiness. <laughs> so I went ahead and put the uh, fairing back on the bike uh, just to see what it's like. You know, I brought the bike down from where I bought it uh, with it removed because <clears throat> the guy had it, you know, separate. <clears throat> um, anyway, I just wondered what it looked like. Uh, yeah, Thought, you know, maybe I will ride around with it because uh, the harness is already hooked in and everything, and so I know I've got electrical issues to chase down. So why reinvent the wheel right now? Let's uh, let's go ahead and work with it the way it was at one point, and um, then go from there. So I've just got this side piece sitting here just to uh, provide a visual. Uh, I'll pop it off. But it's pretty cool fairing. I mean, I did a little research into these uh, Vetter fairings, and um, they were, uh, you know, pretty well respected, pretty cool deals. And you can see the the paint match is very close. Um, so this might have been like a dealership option. Uh, I mean, these were made in the U.S. The Vetter fairings were made. Uh, I forget what town. I'll put it in the subtitle here later. 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 But <clears throat> this was a, an American-made accessory that was very popular. Um, and um, yeah, it's not bad. I was mainly concerned with the, the weight. And it doesn't really add that much. This bike still, with that fairing on it, seems you know, pretty light compared to the Suzuki. Uh, but in any case, so I did uh, play around a little bit. Let me set this down over here with the uh, electrical, um, trying to figure out what's going on. So I got my uh, jump uh, battery tied in. Uh, no battery came with the bike. I'll probably get order one of those um, cheap ones that uh, Classic Octane was recommending. Uh, like 25 bucks anyway but uh, yeah I, I when the guy said he parked it because of electrical problems I was thinking you know probably points and condensers <laughs> uh, yeah it's uh it's like there's nothing here turn it on well let me give you some power and nothing nothing no headlight no anything uh, I have Identified down in here. This is uh, going to the headlight 
in through the harness here uh, and by putting power here I can make the headlight come on so I know you know there's um, the problem is uh, upstream of that and just because this is so sloppy I mean there is no like click 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 I'm thinking my problem is in here I hope so because if I can't find a problem in here then it's somewhere buried in the harness and I'm not gonna be able to get to it without stripping the tank off and all that kind of stuff so my next step is going to be to pop this open and see if I can find something going on uh, by the way one thing does work the horn works but it works only with this little jumper connected which I suspect is somebody's uh, somebody probably bypassed the original circuit because some kind of uh, fault occurred in the past and that was just an expedient repair um, could be wrong maybe the horns always supposed to be functional for some reason I don't know but to me that looks like something that was added later uh, yeah but if I disconnect this uh, the horn does not work if I have it connected the horn works with or without the key and yada yada oh I also I don't know if I've mentioned this previously but there's a tied into the harness is this extra ignition rig here which I don't know I um, I thought maybe that had to do with like a uh, you know making a kill switch that was maybe concealed up under the locked pad here or something to, just an anti-theft kind of thing or it could have been a means of bypassing essentially a faulty switch here but I've no matter what I do turning this turning that uh, I get nothing so I haven't figured it out yet Well, not sure how well you can see up in there, but that is where I believe something's missing. And that's why I think this was wired in. I think this is a replacement module for what should have been up in there. And unfortunately, it's, you know, it's like an aftermarket kind of thing. So I think this, this is the original wiring harness. It does not look like it was spliced in someplace, uh, other than here, so I think this norm, you know, um, originally went to a module that was up in here and is now missing. <laughs> so yeah, that's why there was no clicky clicky or anything while turning this. Can you see that up in there? That's me turning the switch. Yeah, that was supposed to actuate a, um, you know, a, a switch like this one. So this switch should be, if it's wired correctly, uh, taking the place of that. So now I can start tracing here to see whether I'm getting power um, when I turn on the battery. This up here is doing nothing except, you know, the, uh, the wiring is running into the back for the indicator lights. That's it. So I'm going to put those screws back in. There's, there's nothing to be gained here, I don't think, uh, from going into that right now. Yeah. I don't know if you can see up in here. Yeah. Here's my fuse panel, and sure enough, the main fuse is blown. So it's a 5, a 7, and a 15. Uh, I do have a 5 and a 7. This is a 14, yeah. Um, which is fine. And that's, guess what, there was a box of 14 uh, fuses in the, uh, in the fairing, so. So, for right now, we'll try throwing one in there, um, but, you know, that's not necessarily <laughs> the best way to go diagnosing something. If it's blowing a fuse, it's got to have a reason for blowing a fuse, but at least let's see if we can get some uh, something to happen. All right, musty one, look out. I got motorcycles flying in my garage too now. <laughs> this is a, a Craigslist score. This is a Harbor Freight uh, lift. Um, I think even with coupons, they're like 400 out the door and uh, with taxes and everything. So this was 200 bucks off Craigslist. And uh, yeah, it's going to make life a lot nicer even just to change the oil, which is what I'm about to do. I'm hoping to find some oil in the crank case. <clears throat> I was pretty alarmed when I checked 
the dipstick last night. I did not even see any in here. I mean, yeah. So, let's see what we see. Yeah, it looks like 17. I'll get it. Started. She was on there. Moment of truth. Is there anything in there? Yes, yay. <laughs> All right. She was low, but she was not empty. Good news. So more good news. I uh, the second the second part of the procedure for changing the oil on this bike is you drain the oil tank here uh, by taking this off. Same size as the drain plug in the crankcase down there. Uh, just to keep from all dripping down onto the uh, exhaust and everything, I, I used this um, beaker. So I still had uh, three and a half ounces um, of oil in the tank, even though the dipstick wasn't reaching it. So, yeah, that makes me feel better. It was low, you know, should have been added to, but it was not crazy. Uh, on the other hand, <laughs> it's pretty, uh, that's some pretty dark oil. Time for a change. Um, the filter, as best I can figure out, <laughs> my climber manual does not tell me exactly where it is, but just looking at the, it does have an exploded view of the filter and housing. I believe that is it. Um, I'm not going to disassemble that right now because I'm not sure I can locally pick up a filter. Uh, so I'm going to uh, do a little checking here locally and find that out. Hey, good news. Local Advance Auto had this uh, filter, that uh, S6009, which is supposed to be the one to fit in there. So, all right. So, we'll be giving that a shot. I also bought the cheapest 10W40 oil I could find. Um, I don't expect it to, to live in there for very long. We're just going to be basically flushing, assuming we get the thing started. Yeah, there's definitely a, a spring mechanism in here. This is going to be fun to get back together. Oh, not as bad as I thought. Alright. Let's see if this guy... Don't drop the spring. Let's see if this guy looks the same. Oh, the O-ring is still up there. Okay. Let's see if this guy looks the same as the one I just bought. And it does. We are in business. Cool. Well, that's interesting. STP package it says Fram on the front. <laughs> Made in China. Of course. Oh, not sure what time when the battery kicked out, but uh, yeah, got it reassembled. It was kind of a pain in the butt. Just getting that spring uh, compressed while trying to catch the, uh, the screw. But <clears throat> I think it'll go a lot smoother on the second time. I just, uh, first, first time, newbie issues. All right, so filter has been replaced. 
all the plugs have been replaced, so now I can refill it with oil and go on down the road. I'm leaning more and more to just getting rid of this whole fairing thing. I thought, well, you know, the bike is uh, complete with it, so just sort of run with it for a while. But it's, it bugs me so much. Just you know, to get to the spark plugs, you have to take the fairing off, and then even with the fairing off, the brackets kind of in the way. And, uh, I have a feeling that this uh, was a disincentive for regular maintenance on this thing, having the fairing on it. light went off. That's good. I need to swap out my battery pack.